Thank you. Thank you very much, and I thank the uh, organizers for inviting me. Um, I have once in my life gave an eight-minute talk. Uh, this will be my first five-minute talk. I, I hope I will be able to, um, to make it. And the, the request was to give not so much of a scientific but more of a personal uh, talk. So that's, that's what I'm, I'm trying to give you some, some ideas about what happened to my personal life mainly and how that uh, changed uh, through the ERC um, in, a, in a very, very short manner. So I'm, I'm working at the Semmelweis University in Budapest, which is uh, the, you can consider this the medical university or medically oriented health science oriented university of uh, Budapest. I, I switch to this. Um, so I, I was born and educated and, and uh, grown up in, here in Budapest and did my uh, MD training in, uh, uh, at the Semmelweis University and received my MD at uh, nine, in 1990, uh, nine, I mean 1993 at the Semmelweis University, and then I started a PhD and got my PhD degree in 1999. Um, and then it's quite usual at Semmelweis if you want to uh, follow on with a scientific career, then you go abroad, you learn something. So I went to San Francisco to the University of California at San Francisco and spent three years as a postdoctoral fellow there. Uh, until 2002, and in 2002, with my wife, we decided we want to uh, come back to Budapest. So we return, returned to Budapest, and uh, I established my own research group in 2003, and I am a group leader at Semmelweis University since then. An important part is that uh, from 2008, uh, I am a, a starting independent uh, ERC uh, grant award for actually my grant runs out later uh, this year, so I'm, I'm a very late uh, stage in in my career. And just to uh, so I came back to Budapest in 2002, and let me show you where I came back. So this was the uh, the uh, Department of Physiology of the Semmelweis University, which is still our our department. So this was the building of the department. It was built in 1874, uh, and uh, you can imagine that how that this is basically not suitable for modern bio, uh, biomedical research. But let me highlight to you two things on this picture. Um, one is just this flooding here. So this was basically our lab here. And this, is this, this flooding was right on top of us. And it was, it was just um, water was, was coming down. And, and it was really uh, a bad feeling there. Everything was sort of um, rotting. And uh, since our university wanted to move us to a new building for like 30 years, this has not been uh, repaired for, for tens of years. So it was like, like, like this for a very long time. But the other thing I wanted to point out is this tube here, what you see here. So basically, this was a building where uh, which, which, which was not suitable for, or not prepared, not designed for modern uh, uh, biomedical research. But what we really needed was a transgenic animal facility. And uh, instead of crying and saying that we, we can't survive here, what we decided was to uh, build, to take two rooms that have not been used in the basement, down somewhere down here, and we decided to build an animal facility, which was a, a real transgenic animal facility down here. And by Hungarian law, the ex-host uh, of, of this animal facility had to go on uh, above the roof level. So this is basically the ex-host of, of this transgenic animal facility. And this was a huge... Uh, improvement of the quality of science that we, we could do in this very old building, which was otherwise basically unsuitable for biomedical research. Uh, and as I told you, Semmelweis wanted to build a new building for these people, for, for uh, the people working in uh, this building. And since they saw that I was able to, in this very old building, I was able to build a transgenic facility and work and publish from there, uh, they asked me to design the facility of this building, which is our new building, so we moved in here into 2008. And based on this earlier experience, now down in this part of this building, there's a, a very modern, uh, I would say that European level state of the art animal facility, which I designed, it's a huge one. Our cost for animal uh, maintenance is probably like one third of the cost in the US or Western Europe. Still, the facilities are the same and the quality of the science that we do there is the same. And this is something that, that uh, I want to remind everybody that if you want to do science, don't stop and don't give up. Just uh, go on, try to find a way you will do science, and this is very important also for the ERC. So as I told you, in 2008, I uh, received an ERC starting, and the subject of this was molecular 
uh, inflammation research. Basically, we are doing a lot of uh, mouse work. And um, I promised the organizers to tell you a few things about how the ERC funding changed my life. Uh, one is that um, now we have a competitive uh, lab size. It's about 10 people, which is quite good in, uh, in uh, the biomedic biomedical field. Also, it's very important that we have secure finances, both in science, also uh, for my personal life. And uh, also, it's very important that I have true independence. So the head of my department cannot tell me that, Attila, you have to do this and this and this, because the money is mine and I decide uh, about what to do. And also, uh, I have been relieved from a lot of other duties like education, because I have a lot of funding for, for our research. And we have been able, through this, uh, um, re uh, this funding, I have been able to follow up on major challenges. And the most important challenge for our research is inflammation in general, but we are also focusing on one disease. This is rheumatoid arthritis, which is a common, severe, and chronic joint inflammatory disease. And common, severe, and chronic means that it affects a lot of people for a long time and very severely, which means that this is basically a very major societal challenge, and also there are uh, therapies for rheumatoid arthritis. There's also a lot of unmet need, therapeutic need in the, in the field of rheumatoid arthritis. And because of this, we felt that there's uh, a lot of need for new understanding of the disease. And here I come back to the ERC principle. ERC would not fund you to develop a new drug, it would, I think. Uh, the ERC would, uh, would not uh, fund you to, to make some new product and sell it. But the ERC would fund you to understand the basic principles which will lead you eventually to develop a new drug. And uh, this was the ERC kind of, of principle. And just to give you a very uh, simple uh, view, basically through a lot of transgenic animal research and animal models of rheumatoid arthritis, basically we have been able to delineate several molecular players of the arthritis pathway here. And uh, we, are, we are basically identifying four different molecules that are very important for arthritis research. And this could be, in the future, lead to, to uh, new therapies of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So what I would recommend for future PIs is uh, there are these two things that I uh, uh, remember from two colleagues. I remember them. They probably don't remember uh, me and, and having uh, told this uh, to me. But I think especially for the ERC, Tulio Pozan told me once that we should think big and aim high. We, uh, you will not get ERC funding for a smallish thing, just to control an experiment. But if you really big, uh, think about, about big ideas, then you can get ERC funding. The other thing is that, especially in the ERC, you should never forget the basic principle is that the basic goal is to do good science. And this was what, what I learned from Václav uh, Horaeshi, uh, an immunologist in, in Prague. Uh, when I came back from the US, I talked to uh, him and asked him how to make a good career in, in science. And he said, Attila is extremely simple. You have to do good science. And if you do good science, everything will follow. And also, there are also technical details of how to get funded. You obviously need a good track record. Uh, what I think very important is, is that you have to have international experience and you have to have international integration. Without these, people are basically just not, un don't understand the whole principle of the ERC and the international science. Also, um, for an ERC grant, uh, you need a good idea. But very important, again, is that this good idea has to be supported by preliminary results. So it's not just an idea in the middle of nowhere. It has to be based on real, solid data. And finally, uh, there are a lot of technical issues. But I personally think that these technical issues of how to write an application, what parts of the application you have to fill in, uh, how to uh, design your, your financial budget, and so on, and so on, uh, these are minor things. And you can get a lot of uh, help from, from uh, experts. Many of them are in the audience. Uh, many of us ERC uh, grantees here in Hungary got um, uh, help from Erika Sendrak. I met her uh, earlier today. And also, there's a small leaflet in your, uh, in your uh, conference package which tells you all the people that you can contact. So I think the technical issues should not stop you from uh, um, applying for ERC. But the other three points are extremely important for, for uh, submitting a successful ERC application. And at the end, let me just show you uh, the people who are working in the lab. And these are the most important parts of uh, my scientific life and, and uh, scientific success, that these people are there in the lab and working very hard uh, to, 
uh, discover new things in rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you very much.